Hi, welcome to Blender Tutor. I'm Tom, and today I'm going to teach you how to easily create camera shake in Blender that is non-destructive without the use of any add-ons. This can help to give weight to your animation and make your camera feel like a physical object that is affected by your 3D scene. If you'd like, you can download this finished scene on my Patreon in the $5 a month tier. That tier includes all of the project files from my tutorials, as well as material packs and other perks. Link is in the description. So here's the finished scene that we're going to build. We're just going to go over the animation of the camera shake. Um, so I won't go into texturing or lighting or anything in this. But just so you know, all of these textures are free to download from cctextures.com. I'll link that in the description as well. So let's create a new scene and make sure to save it right away. So we can get rid of our cube and our light. Let's bring in a plane. Just scale it up by 10. And then let's bring in a text object. You can rotate that on the X by 90. You go into front view. You can just hit tab. You go into edit mode to change your text. And you can do this technique with anything. Obviously, I'm just going to use text to make it easy on us to learn it. We'll just give it a cool font real quick. So you can just click right here under font. You can click the folder. Go to your fonts folder on your computer. I like this font. And then we can just extrude it a little bit. And then the way I did that outer shape on my finished scene is I just duplicated this. You could turn off under fill mode. You could just turn it to none. And then for depth, you could turn that up a bit and you could see it just creates an outer shell around our text now. And then you could also change the offset amount. Although you'll notice if you sometimes if you offset it too much, it'll start getting weird artifacts in the text. So depending on the font you're using, you can't necessarily do that too much. It's also affected by your bevel type. And that's really all we need to do with the text. I'm going to convert these both to a mesh now. So select each one. You could right click and then just hit convert to mesh. Do that for the outer one. Now go into edit mode, hit A to select all and then hit M to bring up merge and let's do by distance. You can see that removed over 2000 vertices. I'm gonna do the same for the outer text now. And now under the object data tab over here, I'm gonna go down to normals and turn on auto smooth. Now what I'm gonna do is select both uh, pieces of text. Let's go under the plane and let's just bring that up. So it's just basically just touching the ground. Once we've done that, I'm gonna bring in an empty Let's just call this text control empty. Select the inner and outer text and then select the empty last and hit control P and parent the text to the empty. That way we don't have to animate both individually. Hit N on your keyboard to get this pop out panel over here. And at 30 frames into our timeline, let's go up to the Z location for our empty. And you could just right click on that and insert a single keyframe. Now let's go 10 frames back and let's bring that up on the Z quite a bit for four meters is fine. And you can just right click on that and insert single keyframe. And right now you're not noticing much force in that animation. That's because it's a linear animation. So we're going to add some curves to that in a second. But first let's just add in our camera real quick. So if you hit control alt zero on your numpad, that'll just snap the camera to your viewport or to your view in the scene. I'm gonna zero out the X location and on the Y, I'm just gonna bring it forward. And then we can bring this down on the Z. I just kind of want it to be a low angle. So I'm gonna rotate that up a bit and then we're gonna go into the camera settings over here. Let's just bring the focal length down until we can see all of the text. So I'll just do it 20. So I'm going to bring that a little bit closer and I will rotate on the X a little more. Now let's select our empty again, go to frame 20. I just want to make sure our text is out of view of the camera and it is. So we're all good. Let's just make this like a 60 frame animation. Cool, so with that done, let's go to the animation tab up top. 
And we're gonna change this window to the graph editor. So you can just click on this drop down right here, change that to graph editor. And that's gonna show the graph for our animation of our empty. Let's box select both of those keyframes. You could right click and let's go to interpolation mode, turn it to Bezier. And now if we watch it, you could already notice that it is a little bit more interesting. It kind of speeds up, but it is slowing down at the bottom and we don't want that. So let's select our second keyframe over here. You could zoom in with the middle mouse button. And I'm gonna scale down the curve on that. And I'm also gonna rotate it. You just hit R to rotate it until it's basically a flat line straight into the keyframe. That'll take out any curve you have. And I'm actually gonna even extend this a little bit more so we can just select this first keyframe, scale that up a bit. And then I'm gonna rotate that a little more just so it's a straight line. And now we should get a fast snappy drop for our text. Yeah, so that's looking good. But as you can tell, we're not getting the actual camera shake yet. So let's select our camera next. You could just select it in the outliner up here. And we don't actually have any keyframes in it yet. So we don't really need any. We just need a single keyframe so we could use the F curve modifiers in the graph editor. So we know that our text hits the ground at frame 30. So with our camera selected on frame 30, I will add one keyframe on the X. So I'll right click and insert single keyframe and I'll do the same for the Z. Now we could drop down to show both of these up here. Let's do the X first because that's gonna be the more important animation for the camera shake. So you could hit N in the graph editor to bring out this side panel and we're gonna want a modifier and we're gonna add the noise modifier. With X selected, you could hit home, the home key on your keyboard to zoom in to the selected keyframe. And now, right now, you can see it's just shaking randomly. We only want it to shake after the text drops. So you could actually do that all in the modifier panel up here. You could do restrict frame range. And we're gonna want it to start on frame 30. And since I'm my animation's at 24 frames a second, so I will have my camera shake last for half a second. I'll do an additional 12 frames, so that would be ending on 42. And the other thing we could do is have a fade out. So with this out value in the modifier panel, we could set it to 12 frames and it'll start fading right from the beginning of the animation. So now if we watch this, you could see it, it shakes a lot at first and then it kind of peters out over time. But now we could actually adjust the amount of shake. Scale is gonna be how quickly it's shaking. So if it's moving a lot or just a few big shakes, that is maybe a little much. So so let's let's leave this at one for now. But then for strength, let's have it let's have it a, a little stronger in the actual shaking. We'll go to like 2.2. And then the last thing we can change is the offset, which you can see right now, the first frame is kind of just a tiny movement and I want to, I want to start really big. So I'm going to use this offset right here to move the, the noise pattern along our timeline until one of these higher waves are on frame 30. So this will kind of differ based on your project. There we go. So now that I tweaked the starting point of this noise, I'm seeing that the camera shake is a little bit too intense. So I'm going to bring the strength down to like 1.2. I think that's okay. The next thing we're going to do is the Z rotation. So what we can actually do is just copy this modifier, this noise modifier. If you click this um, copy F, modifiers button in the top right and then let's select our Z rotation and paste it and now we can hit home to zoom in on that what we'll want to do because this is the gonna be the exact same movement just on a different axis we're gonna want to change the phase of it to kind of randomize it a little bit and we could also I'm gonna bring down the strength because for the Z uh, rotation, we don't want it to be quite as intense as the X. 
I'll bring it down to like 0.4 and let's just watch that now. I'll maybe even bring that to like 0.25. Cool. And let's go back to our X rotation real quick. I'm gonna also turn the depth up to like one or two. It's kind of just gonna add a little additional variation into the noise pattern. I think that's looking pretty cool. And the nice thing about this is this is so easy to change. You can easily change the starting point of your camera shake and the end point just within this restrict frame range tab over here. Cool, so now that we have the animation done on our camera, let's go ahead and add in the particles. So to create those, you could use any shape for the debris that uh, flies up. I use a cone, so let's bring in a cone and then change the shape so it's just four on the bottom. So it's kind of like a little pyramid. And then for depth, I'm gonna bring that down so it's just more of a even shaped pyramid. Scale that down a bit. I'm gonna bring that down so it's underneath our floor so we're not really looking at it. And I could even hit Control A to apply the scale. Now let's add in a new plane. Scale it along the X until it's a little bit bigger than our text. I'll scale it down on the Y a little also. And I'll rename that plane to emitter. Let's add a particle system. And the number of particles is kind of up to you. For this, I'll just leave it at a thousand for now so we can see what it looks like. So for the starting frame, we're gonna want it to start on frame 30. We could have it end on 30 or 31. And then lifetime, you just wanna make sure the lifetime is long enough that the particles are gonna stick around until the end of your animation. So for this, 50 will be enough because it starts at 30 and this animation ends at 60, but you're gonna to have to adjust this number for your animation. So let's go ahead and select our ground plane and go to the physics tab real quick and just make sure you turn on collision. For the damping and friction, I'm gonna bring those both up to one. And then for randomize, I'll put like 0.25 for each of those. We just wanna make sure our particles stick to the ground. And you'll also wanna do that for the text object. So let's turn on a collision for both of those. And I'm not really too worried about stuff sticking to this, so we can leave those settings alone for now. Let's go back to our emitter object now. Go to the particle settings again. Under velocity, I'm gonna bring a normal velocity up to three. And then for the Z, I'll set that to 1.5. Bring that up a little bit and let's watch that again. There we go. So the particles are working now, but we're gonna have to do a few more things. Like one, if you go to the render tab down here, change render as from halo to object. And then you're gonna select the object that you want your particles to be. So for me, it's gonna be the cone. So we can see them showing up, but we're gonna to want to bring up the scale a bit. And then we're gonna to wanna to bring scale randomness to like, you can even just bring it all the way up to one. So it kind of randomizes the size of your particles. And obviously we don't want particles appearing from beneath the object because we'll never see them. So let's just go into edit mode, add in two loop cuts, scale those down on the Y until it's pretty close to our text. We can do the same thing um, on the X axis. So add two, scale those up till they're outside of the text. Now, if you go into face select mode up here, let's go into wireframe view, select this interface, and just bring that up a little bit. So we have an angle on our mesh for our particles to kind of fly out at a different angle. And I'll even, if you go into edge select mode, I'll select the outer edges, scale that down on the Y so that's a little bit closer. So they, they should fly out in different directions now. The other thing we could do is just select this interface and delete it because we don't want any particles coming from there. Now we can watch that. So we can see it's working, but it's too uniform. It's just a flat edge, so it's not breaking up the particles at all. So let's add in a few loop cuts. We could even just subdivide that once. And now let's go down to fractal in the subdivide menu down here and bring that up and that's gonna kind of distort the mesh. And then we could just add a subdivision surface modifier. Make sure to bring this above the particle system. I'll bring it up to two. And now in our particle system under source, make sure to turn on use modifier stack. 
And we could also turn off even distribution, save that, and now let's watch and see how that looks. So that is looking okay. I'm gonna select our bottom vertices on this emitter. I'll just scale them down to zero. So if you hit S, Z, zero, that'll kind of scale those so they're a flat line again. I'm gonna also bring in these edges on the side so they are a little closer. So if you just select the, the two side edges, scale that down on the X, and we could even add a displace modifier, add a new texture, Go to the texture editing tab down here and change it from image movie to clouds. I just want to add a little bit more distortion there. And now under displace, we could turn the strength down until it's just, you know, adding a little bit of displacement to it to break that pattern up even more. Cool. So that's looking better, although we're going to want to maybe turn down the strength of the velocity. So I'll bring that down to two, and I'll bring this down to one on the Z. There we go. So now in the particle settings, let's turn on rotation over here. Under randomize, let's bring that to 0 0.75. And also under physics, let's go down to forces in Brownian. Let's do 0 0.01. That's also gonna just add a little bit more variation. So let's watch that. There you go. And now that I'm seeing that, I think the scale of the debris is a little bit too big. So I'm gonna bring that down to like 0.185. And I think I want a little bit more debris in this also. So I'll bring the number of particles up to like 1250. And it does seem a little bit weaker now. So let's, let's bring the strength up on the velocity a little bit again. Let's bring that back to three. And let's watch that in the camera view. To get rid of your emitter down here, let's go down to render, show emitter, and then also viewport display. You'd also turn off show emitter. Now let's watch that. There we go. And then the last thing I wanna go over in this tutorial is to get a little motion blur, because I think motion blur adds a lot to the experience of a camera shake. So, so I'm gonna render this in cycles, so let's Go to Cycles up in the Render Engine. I'll turn on GPU. Let's go to this tab over here, the View Layer Properties tab. And we're gonna turn on Vector under Data Passes. And just to get some simple lighting, I'll bring in HDRI. Let's see that. Cool. So let's just render that real quick. And once it's rendered, let's go into the Compositing tab. Let's bring in a Viewer node. With your viewer node selected, you can actually move this image up. If you hit N on your keyboard and go to v the view tab over here, you could hit fit so that your image actually fits in your window. Or you could even scale it up here to shrink it down a little bit. I'm gonna bring my nodes down a bit. Let's bring in a vector blur node. So go into filter vector blur. Let's plug that in. And then we'll plug in our depth into the Z input in the vector blur node and then vector into vector and hit curved. And the default numbers in the node should work fine. But um, you might need to turn up the samples, especially for the really big camera shakes at the beginning of the animation. They usually go up to like 64. And then for blur amount, that's going to affect how blur your image is. For my finished animation, I just left it at one, but you could make it a little bit more subtle and turn that down if you want. But yeah, that's basically the easiest technique I've found to create camera shake in Blender without buying an add-on. So thanks for watching, I hope you learned something. And just a reminder that you can get this project file on my Patreon. I'm gonna actually upload this version of the camera shake so that it's a bit more advanced than what we did in the tutorial. If you wanna dissect the project file and see how I did that camera move, and once again, everything that I textured in that scene was textured from ccotextures.com. It has a ton of free PBR materials and it is a super useful tool for creating stuff in Blender. I would definitely recommend checking it out. All right, well, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.